Hey guys, this is my 1980 911 SC. Uh, I'm getting ready to put the motor back in 100%. I have to pull it back out to do some wiring because I put carburetors on the car, so I'm gonna do a good wire tuck. Um, but while I have everything out, I started doing the suspension and just upgrading a bunch of stuff as we all do with these cars. They're due for it, they're old, so all that rubber needs to be replaced. And I figured while I was in there, I got everything taken apart. Let's get them wheel bearings done and just know that in the future, I'm not gonna have to take apart you know, the brake caliper, the rotor, the rear pads, all that, you know, the, the drum, everything has to come off to do these wheel bearings. And it's kind of a pain in the neck. So I figured, well, I got, well, I got everything out. I might as well get them done. So uh, we'll see what happens. Hey, Max, buddy, you ready to do some wheel bearings? <laughs> Let's do it. So I'm sure you've seen a video, maybe two, of a guy going out and just sitting down and prying this off with a pry bar. Let me tell you, it's not gonna work. I tried it, I got the extendo, the helper bar, I'm cranking on it and I decided, I mean, this one is really bad too. I mean, you can hear it, you can, you can see it. This is as bad as it gets, it's dangerously bad and it's not coming out with this crowbar. So just get that out of your head, it's, not, it's just not gonna work. Uh, you want it to work, but it's not gonna work. It's not going to work. <laughs> Another way that you may think will work, but I've tried it just so that you guys can see um, if it would work on this. I mean, I, I got bru bruised thumb just going at this. Um, so this this is, you know, it's, it's a puller. It's a, it's a slide hammer, puller, whatever you want to call. You would you put it in here, you put a bigger, you know, piece of steel, big socket on this, and you would sit there and, and, and try to get it off. I tried for probably longer than I should have tried, maybe 15 minutes, just sitting here killing this thing, and, I, and I, that's why it's so loose, but I think I was harming more than I was fixing, so um, I stopped doing it just, as, just to show you guys this doesn't work. I, I, I got a little video, a little time-lapse video of me doing it, and you can see that I was just going nutty on it. The thing's rocking all over the place and it just wouldn't work. So here's a clip of that. One way that I was able to get it on the regular style uh, wheel bearing press assembly with the pump jack and everything um, to get this to be flat, I used two, these are 3 8 thick pieces of steel. As you can see, I bent them a little bit pulling the one, but it did work. Uh, and how I was able to do it is you can just slide them right in between here. You may even be able to use a half inch thick piece of steel, but um, this did work and, and it gives you a nice flat surface. It's just a little bit, I would say maybe a little bit sketchy because it, it doesn't, you don't have really that much meat on there. Um, but I, I will say it did work. So that is an option. And, uh, and I'll show you how I did that. Um, a ton. This is an eight ton jack. Uh, and it works pretty good. I, I like it. So as you can see, I got this just slid in there like I was telling you before. And you, you can only do it on this side here. You can't do it obviously on this side. Well, not obvious, but it's flat on this side. You see, you can't really get the piece of steel to go this way. So you can only do it this way. And um, that's that. Let's get All right, going. so this is a rusty old socket I have that I use out here for the press. Um, and this is my press here. So you got to center this up real, real nice. Um, you got to make sure the press uh, shaft is centered up with the, your, whatever you use, a pipe or a socket. And it is also centered up with your, you know, inner wheel bearing race there. And then we'll start pumping. It's gonna get a little shaky because I have no other way to mount this other than to mount it to the um, actual tool here. But here we go. You can already see it going. I, I got it pretty close there, so you're gonna have to wait for it forever. And uh, let me get another angle. Oh, well that's that. I would try to get another angle, but it fell right out of the bottom here. So this is the piece that fell out of the bottom that we were pushing with the socket. Fell right out. Later on, I'll show you how to get this piece off here. Um, not too bad. 
a little tricky, but not bad. All right, so now it's time to pull this cover off because it's blocking your wheel bearing from coming out. As you can see, the wheel bearing is a little bit bigger than this plate, so you won't be able to slide it out until you pull this this piece and this piece off. You might have some difficulty with this, and I did, and I'll show you what I did, and it was a huge job. I'm hoping that this one isn't as bad as my last one. So here goes. All right, so we got the four uh, bolts out with the little uh, fascia piece there. That's out, um, and this piece is just not coming out. Um, I think what causes this to not be able to come out is the water gets in between the steel and the aluminum, and the aluminum corrodes and it expands, um, and then which causes it to get you know stuck together really tight. I'm just not able to get this out. Um, yeah, I'm trying my best. The last one I did, I uh, I had to cut it down the center and then pry it open uh, with some pliers. I had to just really lightly because I didn't want to cut into the aluminum, so I just kept kind of scoring it, scoring it, scoring it, until I was just able to get through enough. To be able to pry it back with some uh, some nice vice grips or pliers, and I was able to get it off. Um, if you can get yours off without doing this, it's really great because these I think on on the I think the only place that I could find them was Pelican Parts, and they're around I think they're like 130 bucks or 140 bucks a piece. Uh, so that was unfortunate to have to buy two of these because you know I need rear brake pads. That's how they're held on. So that sucks. All right guys, so I cut a nice slit in here. I angled it this way because if I had it tight this way, I would have hit the grinding disc on um, on the rear swing arm and I didn't want to do that. This is still a little bit warm from heating up. Kind of a bummer, I wasn't able to get it off the other way. Um, the easy way, I guess. But anyways, I was able to get this and I think I got it pretty close being started here. I was able to pry up on it a little bit. I can whack it a couple times with this thing. Warm. Oh yeah, I think she liked that. Come on, baby. There you go. Yeah, I got this a little gnarled up. That'll be alright. Yeah, you can tell inside here is a lot of corrosion. The steel is not really that big of a deal. But I'll show you this, uh, if I can pull this camera off of here. And you can see this is really corroded here. This one actually doesn't look as bad, but you can see it starts to like kind of build up. You can see it's like thick right here. I think just that one, you know, a little bit of a one millimeter really makes a difference. You can see it a lot more on this side. It's really thick. So... Uh, the last one, I just sent it through a nice, you know, flapper wheel. Why you can really feel it's thick on there. It's odd how it does that, but it is what it is. I'll clean all this up, send this back through the sandblaster, and we'll have it looking real nice and fresh, um, ready to go. All right, so this is the bottom of the uh, control arm here. And you want to be able to make it so that the bearing can slide out. So you don't want to block that. So I got those two plates back in there again. Um, you could have used something that like, was like circle and you know that was bigger than that hole that would have rested so you could slide the bearing through it but um, the plates were fine since you already have them out here might as well give them a go on the top here I've got like a bigger socket underneath um, the press arm and I'm gonna start giving it a go here we got it pretty close so this one's kind of tough there it goes I just felt it drop See to the bottom here. See it? This is the bearing here coming out. You can just see it come out. See if I can get a bottom view for you. Oh, that's maxed out on my uh, on my jack here. It won't go up anymore. So I just got to readjust and uh, we'll give it one more right. go. I've uh, readjusted with a bigger, so a, a longer socket, and I'll give you another 
lower view here. You can see it coming out. And this is me, I'm cranking down on it, pumping this. Uh, I don't wanna pump it yet because I don't want it to come out without you guys seeing it. I thought it was. Ooh. And there you go. So this is the old bearing here. It's a little shabby, huh? She's tired. Put her with the other ones I got down in here. These are our parts we use to press. A couple of blocks for other things. Yeah, this is it. We, we made it this far, now to reassemble. One last thing actually is we have to pull the inside of the bearing out. That's this part. You'll see the new bearing. That's this inside portion. Um, and it, and you know, next is the bearing. But because they're pressed on, a lot of times when you're breaking the old bearing off, this part gets stuck. Almost 99% of the time, this gets stuck. So is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice in here at an angle uh, with, with, a, with a cutting disc, and it, 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 then I'll be able to get a pick in there and spread it apart. I'll show you how. All right, and if you do it this way, you're not gonna be able to get it. So you're gonna wanna hit it at a real hard angle here, and um, maybe even use your tool this way. So you can really get in there without hitting this and you definitely don't want to hit where the bearing goes. You want to get it close, um, and, and, I'll sh and I'll show you how I do it here. All right, got it on the other side here. Again, you want to be really careful. I'm getting pretty close here. Go a little bit more. Let's try that. All right, so I've got a regular old pick tool here. And uh, I'm gonna just try to break it. So you're just gonna try to separate it. Because again, if you cut too much, it's gonna hit this. And I was told in the past by some old timers, if you score this, it'll ruin your bearings. I'm not sure how, but that's what they say. So I just abide by the old timer rules. Uh, any rules I can learn, I try to use. How about that? One hit and it pops right off. We still got some more meat to go though. That's unfortunate. So I'm gonna have to kind of get in there a little bit and uh, Get a little bit more of this off. I can't believe I just snapped most of that off. Let me get this one more whack just for fun. Nah, we gotta get a little bit more, but I can't believe uh, this whole section just snapped off. Crazy. But yeah, you can see I got a little bit more to, to cut. I was just being a little gentle with it because I don't wanna, again, score the hub. So being that it's uh, really close to being done, I'm gonna just try to wedge something in here and see how this works. Oh, I love it, I love it. I had a feeling. Yeah, you can see it, it cracks, see how it's, there's a crack here now. If you can just just a little bit. You can see it like right here. But uh but yeah, that should slide right off. Let's see how she looks. Oh yeah. It's bugger. I'm hitting uh I'm hitting the opposite side of this. It's hard to see, but uh, I'm hitting it up here with the hammer. Let's see if I can show you. Like right here. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Yeah, we like that. Nice and clean. All right. Everything sandblasted and we we I put threw this in there as well. Um everything's pretty pretty good. It looks good. Um a little bit of corrosion on this, but those are always easy. I can replace those later if I find that I don't like them um on the uh brake shield there. But on the bearing brake covers, these came out pretty good. I believe I mean mine were gold zinc plated before. I probably could have gold zinc plated the new ones. Um they were already black. I 
I sandblasted them and hit them black again. You're only gonna really see just the back area of this um, hardly. So I think black will be fine. Um, but yeah, everything came out good. Let's throw this stuff back together. Uh, I threw the, the, uh, the trailing arm in the sandblaster just to dust off some dirt. Uh, however, I taped the inside of the wheel bearing area so that no sandblast, you know, kind of corroded this because you want it nice and smooth. Uh, there's a little bit of tape residue in there, but I'll clean that up before I put the bearing in. As well as I taped off the mono ball so that the sand didn't ruin the um, rubber bushings on that. But you don't have to sandblast your trailing arm. I just did it because I, I wanted to just do the full job and I feel like I mean, it's not really technically the full job, but I, I just really wanted all my work to look clean and, and just be happy with how everything came together. Um, so there's, there's, I believe that there's no specific way to put this bearing in. You can put it in this way or you can flip it around and put it in this way because on the inner race, it's 50% on each side. So if it was, you know, 30, 70, then I would say, hey, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I think it would actually, it would tell you either way. Um, but so anyways, slide the bearing in, whichever way you feel like putting it in, However, I think how I'm going to do it is put the bearing into the trailing arm first and then slide the outer wheel uh, hub assembly into the bearing. Uh, reason being is I'm able to get a nice bigger washer with a bolt inside um, and I, I, can, I can slide this right in. So to push it nice and smooth, because remember how we took it out, we, we, we smashed the inside of the bearing out with, with the punch. So, um, that'll weaken the bearing. The bearing can take a, a, a big load this way, but not a big load this way. So you wanna make sure, I think the best way to do it is to use the outside ring you know, of the bearing and slide it into the hub assembly. Because if we were to put it on this first, we could, but when you have it in, if you can kind of see, there's nothing, once it's on there, there's nothing supporting this outer edge. So once we're pushing this in, the outer edge is being pulled back and pulled back this way. And I think it'll, I think it would damage the bearing. So in my opinion, um, I think best to put it in the, in the, in the trailing arm first, and then you can hold the back of this bearing with a washer, um, and then slide everything together. So anyways, let's get All right, out. guys, I got this nice bearing kit. Um, I got it off Amazon. I think it was around 80 bucks and it's a great kit. Um, and it gives you enough to you enough, enough bits to be able to use for uh, multiple cars, not just the 911. So if you ever have to do another one of these, this is a great kit to have. Um, I don't know the name of it. The sticker that was on the box came off. So, uh, but they're, they're pretty universal. Um, so what you want to do is you want to find one. This one I, I just checked. And it fits the back. There is a flat area, and it fits the back of this flat area. Really nice. So we're going to use this one for the back. And then you cap it with this guy here. And that fits on there really nice. And maybe we'll even try this guy here and see how this one works. Not, uh, yeah, too, too, uh, too small. What about this guy? I don't like it. So we're going to run this one on the back. We're going to slide the bolt through it hard doing this one-handed slide it through you know we're even going to throw a washer on there just because i'm being nice today um it's a nice washer and then so this will go through the back and then on the front side we want to find one of these that fits on this bearing really nice see it's a little bit too small you want to really fit it around the outer edge so let's try the next size up Ooh, we're getting close maybe one more Oh, we like that. That fits. That fits snug. So this is what we're going to use. So let's put it all on the uh, hub assembly. All right, guys. Uh, unfortunately, I left my impact gun in my truck. We went on a long road trip over the weekend. So I took a whole toolkit and I thought it'd be best to have my uh, impact gun in there just for quick roadside assistance. However, my wife has my truck, so we're left doing it old school, which is probably best anyways, just to kind of keep an eye on everything. Because again, you really want to make sure this bearing goes in nice and straight. You don't want, it, if you start it and it goes crooked, you want to stop and just try to figure out a way to get that thing back in there so it goes in nice and smooth and straight. Because once it's in there tight, you got to remember this is a lot of pressure put, you're putting on this. So it's going to take a lot of pressure to reverse it. Or you could 
In this case, this is aluminum, so it's a lot more fragile. You could crack this or warp this housing, and these are pretty expensive. I think they're like $1,500 or something like that. So you wanna make sure they're nice, smooth, and just take your time with it. And it's probably best to use some hand tools rather than an impact gun, even though you really wanna use the impact gun. That was an arm workout. Uh, it's hard to look cool while you're doing that. Anyways, uh, let's pull this apart. I think the bearing could go in a slight amount. I could be wrong. We're gonna check on that back pad. You can see it from the inside here on this side and see how close we are. And um, maybe put it in a little bit more and uh, use that other wheel bearing um, piece here because this one was just a little bit bigger and I noticed it may have touched this aluminum piece and that was blocking it from going in any further. So, no, we're good, we're good. Let's get a close up of that so you guys can see how it looks. Right up against, you want it right up against this inner wall here and that's perfect. Nice and flush out here too, really like that. Yeah, that's great. Before I forget, make sure you put this piece on first before you put the new uh, wheel bearing assembly in. Uh, uh, it's tight. So yeah, you're uh, you're gonna. There's another ring that goes on this, and then your four bolts. Let's throw those in real quick. All right, guys, we got the plate on. We're happy with that. So now we're gonna start working on the other side here. I chose this one. Again, it's all it's all a preference too, but I like this one. I think it fits it fits nice just on the center ring. So we're gonna be pushing the center ring this time. Um, but we're gonna be using, we're only putting force on the center ring. We're not putting force on the center and the outside, which would cause it to go, that would cause it to pop out. We're, we're putting force on the inside and then on the other side of the inside. So you're safe to do it this way. All right, guys, I changed my mind. I'm not gonna run that smaller one. I'm gonna run this bigger one. It's flat on this side. And it's nice to have this bigger kit where you can have the option to change things around. I just like that it centers up inside the aluminum hole a lot nicer. So it's a little bit easier, again, because you want everything nice and centered, nice and straight, because you don't want to put this in sideways. Otherwise, you could be, could be boned, I guess. So while you're doing this, you really wanna make sure while you're snugging that up, that first initial snug is close, you know? You can really, you can feel it, you know? And you can get it, kind of massage it into place because you've got that leeway right now while it's just hand tight. But once you, again, once you start cranking this down, it is what it is. You gotta make sure it's the right way. So. I think I like this, it's a little bit. It should, sometimes if you got it really close, it'll kind of figure itself out. So don't be nervous to give it like a little bit of a, a snug. Let's go on. Again, I wish I had my impact gun, but it is nice to do it the slow way, just to really watch what's going on. I feel like it would be a little bit easier if I wasn't recording all this, but there we go. It likes it. She is going in. If you can see that, let me just try to, I think that's a little better for you guys. You can barely see it going in, but one thread at a time. She's sliding in. And once you, once you start it, it's gonna go in nice and straight, so. But it's that initial setup that you really want to get perfect. It's kind of, it's kind of sliding around. I think, I think I got maybe a little washer underneath the vice stand here. It's just a flat piece of steel. So and you're gonna get this. Oh. You just go right to the end, right till it stops, you'll feel it.
Wow, it's really, oh, there it is. I think, jeez, there it is. Now, oh, now it's tight, but it's just the nut and bolt is tight. Once you, once you loosen it, it'd be nice free spinning bearing. We love it. All right, guys, we're done. You made it to the end. It's a great feeling, a good sense of accomplishment. You did it. I, you know, you tell your buddies, hey, I did the wheel bearings. You did the wheel bearings. It's a big job. It's a lot of work here. Um, so congratulations on that. Um, you, you Hopefully you learned a couple of things. If not, maybe just, you know, a couple of tips here or there. And uh, at least you got to check it out, you know, um, or, or watch the video and say, hey, I'm not going to do that and send it to the shop. But if you did do it yourself, you saved a ton of money. Um, you, you got to blow the dust off some tools that you haven't used in a while, or maybe you got to use some new tools. Um, you didn't have, you didn't send it to some shop and have some kid work on your car that may or may not have known how to do this. Watch this similar video, or maybe even this video, and work on your car um, without you, and maybe didn't really fine tune it as much as you would have if it was, you know, if you were working on your own car. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna paint the nuts and bolts. You're gonna do a couple of those things where because it's yours and you love this car. It's, it's a Porsche 911. Um, it's a great car. You know, it's fun. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and uh, as, as much as I did, it was fun. It was fun doing this, and uh, I still got to go and edit all this, but it'll be fun for me. I'm learning a lot, and uh, hopefully you guys learned a couple of things too. I really appreciate you guys watching, and uh, have fun.